I want to talk for a minute about thumb picks, since we're all doing this thumb picking stuff. It's a difference in the sound, a difference in the pitch, a difference in the kind of picks you use. Look, at, I brought some that I use. My current favorite, because I, I switch around a little bit, my current favorite are these uh, picks made, they're called Golden Gate picks, but they have a model like this and all of them seem different, so it doesn't seem consistent, except uh, my buddy uh, Johnny Hyland will come and say, hey, Bresh, I found these picks for you, and they're perfect, so he knows what I like. But it's a thick pick. Now, I've got some that are thinner and some that have a longer uh, base. This one doesn't have much. I don't know if you can see that or not, how much sticking up. I watch a lot of the young players, and they push these picks clear up past their nail bed, clear up like this, so you can see the bottom of their nail bed. I can't play like that. I don't, I don't know, but it seems a lot of the young players seem to want to play that way. Travis... Put his pick on right about that far, like so. Just where about half the half your nail bed is showing on the thumb. And he slightly turns his in a little bit like this. So when he would strum, hear the sound of that? its own sound. Now, let me show you something else. One of the things about playing with a thumb pick, like in the studio, they don't like thumb pickers to come in and play on, on sessions. It's usually just rhythm guitar, get in front of a condenser mic and strum away, but it uh, doesn't sound right with a thumb pick until Fred Kelly came along and made these, these little, uh, I think he calls these um, speed picks, I think is what he calls it, the speed pick. I told him, he's a very religious man, I told him, I said, the way it's shaped like this, and we're all musicians, why don't you just call it an up yours pick? And he, he blushed and he thought, oh, I don't, I don't think I could do that. But... I can, and I love these picks, but they have a totally different sound because look, they're real flimsy. Flimsy. So you can get it to sound kind of like a... You're playing country rhythm. I mean, it's got that flimsy sort of a sound like a, a straight pick. Oh... I could never hold one of these things. It's just, I've just played since I was a little kid with a thumb pick, trying to be like Dad, you know, that sort of thing. But listen. It's already turning around on me, but just listen to the sound. Forget my playing. Good old country rhythm. Now, if I do it with this... Fred Kelly pick, it'll sound about the same. Oop, there it goes. I got another one here of a different stiffness. Yeah, that's more like a straight one. So, I mean, there's different picks. Chet loved the Blue Herco pick. I think that's what Brent Mason uses a lot, and uh, he likes that. And I don't know what makes Tommy Emanuel sound so good. I know it has to be in his pick. <laughs> right. But here's another one that Highland found me. It, I don't know what the make of this is. Well, it says it's a Dunlop. I like those too, but they're stiff. Like But there's a big difference, so experiment with your picks. If you want something pretty, use no picks at all. Listen to the bottom end. Isn't that 
pretty. So I'm going to show you another little tip and trick here that, uh-huh, uh you thought I forgot. Normally you would have been right. Travis always uh, played down the neck. Where he played made a big difference in the feeling you get as a listener and the, the emotion that comes out of the music. Like if it was a single string line, Travis wouldn't play it like this. He would play it down here. Hear the difference? Down instead of up here. That's a little bitier and a little more uh, twangy, even though it's an acoustic. If you've seen Travis play his big Gibson Super 400 Special, he's got that big long whammy bar that he developed that whole system, by the way, and Bigsby built it. But he wanted it long and come down so it would be out of the way when he strummed, and then it came up, and, and right down here is where it would end. Come all the way this far. And it had a ring, a big ring on the end. He would hook his finger in that ring where he could even reach down farther on the neck to get that bell-like sound. Instead of... So, I mean, experiment with your pick. Jerry Reed always used a hard pick, but he'd play a nylon string guitar, too. That was a big part of Jerry's sound, that nylon string. And a lot of people thought that Jerry played real hard. He didn't. Played really soft, really delicate. But you said, well, I can hear it buzzing. Yeah. Jerry had those little flamenco strings, and he had them laying down on the neck. All you have to do is hit it like this, and it would buzz. So you'd think that he's playing it hard because you hear it buzzing like that. Well, listen, son. Mm -hmm. Jerry played soft, but he liked, he said, well, I wish I could get a guitar, have the strings down real low, and I could go like this. And you'd hear it go. Mm -hmm. He said, I hate to have to push him down, see. That's Jerry. Now, Chet Atkins, on the other hand, his strings always seemed like they were really high. Because he said, well, you get your best sound when the string's off the neck, don't you know? He makes it look so simple. Quick story, I went in to see Chet one afternoon in his office, and he had a Ramirez nylon string there. He said, play me a tune before we go to lunch. And I said, okay. So he handed me over that Ramirez, and I tried to play something like God, I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. I'm, this is all I got. I'm gritting my teeth like this to try to play a song. Yeah, uh -huh, that's what I thought. I said, what? Well, you you, you got to strengthen up your hands. You're used to those. My, my uh, action's always really low on all my guitars. I like low action. I feel like an electric. Chet says, no, you need to play on this Ramirez to where you can play it really clean. That's what I use. Well, why do you use that with such a hard action, a high action? The strings are like this. You try to push them down, even though it's nylon. It's like, God, this is horrible. He said it's kind of the same thing as going in the in the uh, batter's circle before you go out there and swing two bats around. Then you throw a bat away, go out there. That bat's like a matchstick. You can knock the hell out of the ball. Same thing with the guitar. You get to where you can play on a... This high-action nylon string guitar, you put a regular guitar in your hands and it just feels so sweet and nice. And because the strings are up, you know you're getting a great tone, get the most sustained and the best tone that you can get. So that's, that's Chester and that's Jerry Reed and Travis. Long, he, he always sound, though, I got to say, if he was playing his Martin, he sounded the same as if he was playing your Gibson or that Alvarez that they sent to him. It's just all in his hands. You can, we can play all these licks all we want, but it, it's in the player's hand and his being and uh, everything about that is where your style and the sound comes from. It's not just 
the technique. But nobody says that you have to be exactly Merle Travis, you're not. Jerry Reed, you're not. And I promise you, you're not Chet. You're not me. You're not Tommy. And I can go right down the list of all the True Fire artists here. You're none of them. You're you. And music is just an expression with melodies and stuff. So play it your way. Tell the story your way. And just grin and somebody will like it. That happened to me. <laughs> so... Uh, be careful with those thumb picks and try a bunch of them out, you know? They used to be three for a quarter. I, I paid like $3 or something for a pick. Oh, well. I used to pay a lot more for gas than when I was a kid, too. So anyway, get you a thumb pick and just experiment and don't be afraid to take it off. <laughs> 